Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and today I'm going to show you how I painted my mousse and got him all done using some latex paint. Now in the last video, my daughter came out and showed us how she had picked out four different sample colors of latex paint from Lowe's and she used those colors to make a really nice wide range of warm and cool browns and grays. And just really, really nice. Just as she was driving away, I grabbed those paints and I started, started working on my mousse. She actually mixed up a lot more colors than I did. I actually thought I was going to be using a lot more colors, but at, at, at a certain point, I decided I'm, I'm going to stop because I really liked the way it was coming out and I was afraid that I was going to mess him up if I did anything else to him. I'm, I'm really happy with the way he came out. It went really fast. I used a chip brush and a grainer brush, two brushes, and just a few latex colors. In fact, I didn't put any paint at all on his antlers. Jesse showed us how the colors would work if it was just put directly over the brown paper that I had used for the for the mousse. And I really like that idea because I have in the past been accused of uh, paper mache animal abuse <laughs> because I put my, my animal heads on the wall. And I thought it would just be fun this time to make it really obvious that it was paper mache and just leave it uh, plain. I didn't even put, put very much paint here on his nose. I just let the, the paper itself be the base color for him and I, I just I'm, I'm just really happy with it. So let me show you how I did it. So I'm not going to make like a portrait of any particular moose. I'm just going to play with my colors and, and see what happens. I'm going to start out with the really dark colors that uh, Jesse got. This one is called Tuxedo. This is just a, a chip brush that I got at the hardware store. Nothing special. I am going to be using a, a grainer brush later for some more you know, some finer hairs, but I think this will work for right now. Let's see, we'll find out. And I do want to layer it quite a few colors too. So this is not going to be the final color. Now one nice thing that Jesse happened to mention is that you don't have to worry about this first coat if it doesn't come out exactly right, because we're going to be putting more layers over it so we don't have to really uh, worry about the fact that Maybe this isn't exactly the way we're going to want the, the final painting to be, which it obviously is not. And that's, that by itself would not be quite what I wanted, but it's going to be a lot different once we get a few more colors on there, especially with a finer um, brush. I've got a lot of the dark fur on there, and I want to um, not necessarily lighten it up so much, it just give it a little bit more interest, a little bit more, more layers. So I'm just putting a very small amount of this other color that Jesse brought. This one is called Sweet Cardamom. If you look really close at, at moose heads, you can see that it would take me um, days <laughs> to paint it if I was being realistic and I'm not going to be. This is that grainer brush. And because this area is supposed to be really dark, I will have to come back over most of this with more of the really, really super dark color. I'm giving him kind of a um, kind of winter coat, I guess you could say. It's not, not sitting flat against his leather. It's actually kind of, you know, sticking up a little bit. But I will have to come back over this with some dark look at a whole bunch of moose photographs and obviously you want to pick the one that you think is prettiest and paint yours with those colors. I think this is really turning out interesting. I might not make him as dark as I thought I was going to. I'm just putting real short strokes here of that, um, the cardamom mixed with tuxedo. This is definitely a 
very dark blue gray because I added this this um, really nice teal color Newport gray they call it but it's blue and I'm just gonna try to lightly cover up some of the um, the brown there just so that it looks like uh, different hairs different colors are all kind of intermingling with each other I'm trying something really simple. This is a stencil brush with only a very small amount of paint on it. Huh. That's kind of fun. I believe that I was kind of thinking I needed to do more because it, this just wasn't hard enough. <laughs> um, you know, it, it should be uh, more trouble to paint something than this, but I'm actually really liking it. So I think I'm just about done. I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to leave the antlers unpainted in this area to just let the the brown color of the paper be the base coat and and let it be the color of those lighter areas. I let him dry overnight and then I used some Deco Art Ultra Matte Varnish to seal him up. I wanted to make sure that that paper mache is not going to absorb any uh, moisture from the air. It's always really important with a paper mache sculpture to make sure it's really well sealed. Now I also want to mention that um, I've seen a lot of articles out on the internet, and I've been seeing these for years. They always seem to say exactly the same thing. And that is that if you buy these sample colors, you're not going to get real paint. That it's somehow different. Now maybe that's true with some brands or with some companies, but because I was a little concerned about it, I actually called our local Lowe's um, for the paint department and asked the lady who mixes up the color and said, is this real paint or not? And she said, yeah, they use exactly the same base and the same pigments in the sample sizes when they're mixing them as they do for the gallon and the quart sizes. So you're getting exactly the same paint. Now, I didn't call up every single paint company and every DIY store. So obviously, if you're using a different brand or you're going to a different store, go ahead and ask them. But as far as the Sherwin-Williams and our local Lowe's, it's exactly the same paint. And we've gotten a lot of comments from other people who have used latex paint for their artwork and everybody seems to really like it. I really did enjoy painting this guy, uh, even though I did it really, really simply and I, I went really fast with great big brushes. I'm, I'm really happy with the way the paint worked, how, how easily it flowed, how nice and easy it was to get some details on this guy. So I am going to be sticking with this. Now I will put a link right down below so that you can watch Jessie's video too, so you can see why she picked out these particular colors for these particular browns and grays. And if you want to make a mousse of your own using my pattern, you can find that at ultimatepapermache.com mousse pattern. Um, I do hope that if you make one, you'll come back to my website and show him off on the Daily Sculptors page because I would love to see how it turns out. Now every, every real mousse is different and I know that everybody who makes a mousse is going to make a very different mousse and I would love to see how they come out. So go make something and then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.